church or we can say building teamwork in a church uh thank you for tuning in if you are listening to me please um share this video with someone uh share us with someone praise the lord let us listen to the word of god i'm going to read from the book of colossians the book of colossians um it's good to share god's word the book of colossians amen uh, chapter 4 verse 7 colossians chapter 4 verse 7 we are going to read up to 18 colossians chapter 4 so we're going to see the life of paul and remember paul was a uh, Paul was in prison. The Bible says there's one person he said that can talk about him. And his name was Tychus. Verse 7, Tychus will tell you all the news about me. <clears throat> he is a dear brother, a faithful minister, a fellow servant in the Lord. I'm sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening. My fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, sends you his greetings as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. Jesus, who is called Justus, also sends you greetings. These are the only Jews among the only Jews. Amen. So he says, these are the only Jews among my co-workers. Underline the word co-workers for the kingdom of God. <clears throat> they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you. He's always praying for you that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I watch for him that he's working hard for you and for those at Laodicea and here Rapolis. Our dear friend Luke the doctor and Damascus sends greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters at Laodicea and to Nepha and the church in house. After this letter has been read to you, see that it also read in the church of Laodicea and that you in turn read the letter from Lord this year. Tell Akipas, see to it that you complete the ministry you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write these greetings in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. Praise God. Today has been a beautiful day. Um, of course, we all went to work. It's been busy. But... Um, brothers and sisters, just wanted to talk about a few things uh, in the word of God. There are so many names here involved. You listen to the names and count them yourselves. Number one, Tychicus, Tychicus, that's number one, and he's a brother who was reporting about Paul, so he was on the team. Another person on the team was Onesimus, our faithful dear brother. He's, he was also on Paul's team. And he saw, he's also Paul is talking about another person on his team. Prisoner, he was a prisoner. Aristarchus was also on Paul's team. Mark was on Paul's team. The cousin of Barnabas. Jesus, who is called Justus, also sends greetings. That was also on Paul's team. These are the only Jews among my co-workers for the kingdom of God. So we see 
names after names on Paul's teams. Verse 12, Epaphras was also on his, on his team. Um, let me see somebody else. Lord, um, okay. So all those, Akipas was also on his team. But remember, Paul was in prison. Paul was in prison. But he was building a team. And he reminded them, he said, please do the work that was given to you. He said in verse 17, see to it that you complete the ministry you have received in the Lord. Uh, I want to remind everyone, Jesus called us and Jesus is the one who gave us responsibility to serve in Believer's Miracle Center. Anyone, if you have a position, if you are just a member, if you if you're a leader, whatever position you are in the ministry, God is the one who has given you the ministry, not me, not not any man not any friend, not any pastor. It is God who called you. And I want us to begin to take, uh, I know we are taking ministry seriously, but I wanted to talk more about team building. Praise the Lord. Building a team for the kingdom of God. Standing together as children of God. Um, the Bible says, Three things that I want to talk about. There are those that reported about the life of Paul. And Paul was proud. You know, can you imagine Paul was in prison? He wasn't driving a limousine. He wasn't living in a fancy house. But he built a team. He had people he mentioned. Faithful people who prayed with him. Faithful men of God who stood with him. Number one, he talked about in verse 12, he says, Epaphras, a volunteer prisoner, found, founder of the church in Coloss. He was imprisoned because he was a founder of the church. He was a slave of Christ. He was faithful. And he says he was prayerful. And he was a shepherd. You know, a shepherd is the one who, because he was in church, and they imprisoned him because he had begun a ministry. So he was in prison because of Christ. You think about it. How many of us are going to still be strong when we are in trouble? How many of us are going to be immovable even when trouble is knocking on the door of your house? But the Bible says in that prison situation... These men were still in collaboration. There was no phone. There was no WhatsApp. There was no YouTube. There was no Facebook. But there was writing. Paul wrote to all of them. And he communicated to all of them. And he mentioned each person. Those who prayed. Those he sent. Those who cared for other people. You see Paul talking about each individual doing something for the body of Christ. That means when you want to build a team, if we want to work together, no matter what position the person is, we don't look at where they are, we look at the vision and the ministry that God has given us. We don't look at where somebody came from, we don't see how much money somebody got, if somebody is wealthy or somebody is poor, Somebody has a, a, a education. Somebody does, doesn't have education. Somebody is recognized in the community. Somebody is not. When it comes to team building, building a team for Christ, a building a team for the body of Christ, for the, for the ministry, it's, it's beyond what we have. It's beyond our positions. It's beyond our fame. We look at each other and we begin to support one another. I look at the singer and I support them. The singers support me. I look at the praying team. 
they look at me also. We look at each other and pray for one another. I look at the women's group or the choir, the elders, the youth, the Sunday school, the families, those who give sacrificially to support the ministry, those who put up equipment, the sound, those who put up sound system, and those who do a projectory, anyone who's in the ministry, whatever you do, the ushers, praise the Lord, the, the praise team, we communicate. The reason why Paul had a strong team, you see him communicating to everyone. You don't see him saying only a few people are doing the job. He's mentioning everyone. Everyone is involved in the ministry. That's what we call team building. And everyone recognizes the, others, the other person ministry. If I'm a pastor, I ought to recognize somebody who's doing something else in the ministry. Whether you're an usher, whether you're a singer, whether you are teaching Sunday school, whether you're leading praise, whether you're just putting up chairs, whether you are in the choir, whether you are uh, uh, working with the equipment and sound system, whether you're working on the projector, whether you're working in, on decoration, uh, making sure that we have everything looking good in the ministry, whether you're working on, uh, on, uh, on uh, uh, hospitality, you know, making sure we eat something, we recognize one another or we recognize each other. We put value on one another. We communicate. Thank God for the individual ministries, but there has to be communication. There has to be some greeting to one another. There has to be some, let me call someone from the worship team and say hi. Let me call somebody from the team, those who pray, those who lead us in prayer, and say hi and greet them and tell them, how do you feel? Let me talk to somebody who's in the, the you know, who's an usher and just say hi to them. Let me call someone who is, uh, you know, on sound system. Let me just call them in Sunday school. Let me just call somebody who, who I saw is new in the ministry. He has not made friends. There, some, some, of, some of the people you see them come to church. They pray, they worship. And one after service, nobody goes to say hi to them. We only look for who we know. We look for our friends. We look for those who we are familiar with. We talk. But I pray that we begin as a church, we will begin to go beyond some individual and we begin to go for all individuals. Paul showed us this example. He spoke to all leaders. There was Epaphras. Amen. He was a prisoner. There was Akipas, there was Philemon's son, the pastor of the church. He encouraged them to do his job as his fellow soldiers. He mentioned Luke, was off, you know, was also part of his team. Praise the Lord. He mentioned Demas. He mentioned all the people you see in the book of Colossians, chapter 4. Why is he mentioning them? Because he puts value on everyone. We put value on every person in Believer's Miracle Center. Praise the Lord. Some of them are friends. Some of, some of us we see, some of you see me as a shepherd, as a pastor. Some of you see me as a friend. Some, some of you see other people as they are vulnerable. And you go, you talk to them, you pray with them. You counsel them. You encourage them. That's what we call ministry. Praise the Lord. So why were all these men, with the exception, exception of Damas, loyal to the team? They were born again, number one. They were committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, number two. They loved Jesus, number three. Why would... Now, and question number two. Why you would somebody want to be a friend to a prisoner, not because of their status, it's because Paul had Jesus in his life. Praise the Lord. 
Sometimes you don't want to talk to someone, but because they have Jesus in their life, please, I pray, talk to them. Let's build a team of love. Let's build a team of communicating to one another. Let's build a team of valuing each one's position. Whether you think it's low or high. And in Christ, there's no position that is high or low. In fact, Jesus gave a parable. He said he hired, there's a servant, a master who hired people. Some worked for 18 hours, some worked for 10 hours, and some worked for one hour. But Jesus paid, the master paid them the same amount. And, and so Jesus said that is how the kingdom of God is. is. The kingdom of God is not looking at your, who you are. It's looking at the blood of Jesus that has cleansed us. And we are all made new. And we are all equal in the image of God. We are all the same in the image of God. We are all valued in the image of God. We are all vital in the image of God. We are all important in the image of God. When we are in the ministry, let us talk to one another, love one another, care for one another, help one another, value one another, lift one another. Praise the Lord. Don't just say for me, I only talk to the worship team members. No, go beyond. Don't say, I only talk to the uh, 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 praying team, intercessors. Go beyond that. Don't say, for me, I only talk to the elders. No, go beyond that. Don't say, for me, I only talk to the ushers. No, go beyond that. Paul, he wrote a letter. And in his letter, he mentions everyone and what they were doing. Can you imagine? A man in prison. But he had a heart. He didn't look at his pain. He didn't look at his chain. He didn't look at his cell where he was. He didn't, he didn't look at his suffering. He still had a heart to talk to everyone. I pray that we don't just look at our problems or our issues or what we have. We go beyond that. We reach out to everyone. We encourage one another. We call each other. We, you, feel, you see somebody hasn't come on Sunday, check on them. Don't just say the pastor will call or the pastor's wife will call or the elders will call. Oh, the, 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 you know, other pastors will call. Pastor Irene will call. Pastor Kabali will call. No, it's for everyone. Some of us were like, for me, I'm in trouble. I have my issues. I don't even want to be bothered. No, Paul never looked at his problem. In prison, he wrote more. In prison, he loved more. In prison, while he was in prison, he cared for more, for people who were, in, who, were, who were free. He reached out to everyone. Because Jesus Christ is greater than any problem we have. We have to see Jesus above our problems. If you see your problem above Jesus, the problem will swallow you. If, if you see Jesus above your problem, you're going to overcome the problem. Paul was released and he continued to preach he went ahead and preached more because he never looked at his suffering he looked at the team that jesus was building in trouble hallelujah in pain he saw victory praise the lord he saw that he's going to make it more hallelujah so today as children of god i wanted us to if you can go back and look at this book Colossians. In fact, on Sunday we looked at um, Jesus' triumphant entry, Matthew chapter 21, triumphant entry of Jesus. And Jesus said, Go get me the cord. And the cord was willing to be sat on. And the question was, Jesus has a need. Are we willing to carry him where he has to go? Are we willing to? serve when he calls me. Can you answer and say, I will answer and I will say yes. When he calls you, can you say yes today? Can we not just say, I'm going to church to pray and then you go. Can we go beyond? Hug one another, love one another, check on one another, encourage one another, pray for one another, praise the Lord. These departments are just departments. For me, I'm in the worship team. For me, I'm in the praying team. For me, I'm the elders. For me, those are all those sections. 
are just for ministry. But remember, we are one body. We are one body. The finger is, for the bo- uh, is on the body. The head is on the body. Praise the Lord. The toe is on the body. The trunk is on the body. The shoulders are on the body. On the body. So it's one, bod- one body. Jesus is one body. We are all in the same body of Christ. We are in the same family of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, there's somewhere where Jesus, uh, Paul mentions about prayer. He says, he says, uh, in verse 10, he says, do not be afraid of you about to suffer. Uh, I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. No, no, chapter 4. Let's go back to chapter 4. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 4, verse, verse 7. So, he talks about Tachikas. He says, I'm sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances. Just know about our circumstances and pray for us that he may encourage you in your hearts. He's coming with Onesimus, our faithful dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. Even if I'm here and you are there, we are still one, one body. We are in one team. My fellow prisoner, Arista, sends you greetings. So Paul wasn't by himself in prison. He had some other people in prisons for the gospel. He, said, he talks about Jesus' justice. Also, he says, sends greetings. He said, some Jews, also co-workers in the kingdom of God, they send you greetings. He said, Epaphras, who is also one of the servants of Jesus Christ, send greetings. He's always wrestling. Listen, he is always wrestling in prayer for you. A man in prison is praying for everyone. Team building. We don't look at, for me, I belong here, and I belong here. We are one. We are under one umbrella. Jesus, our Savior our deliverer. I pray Believer's Miracle Center that we shall build a team that is going to win. A winning team. Are we willing to carry Jesus? Are we willing to meet Jesus' need? Are we going to be like the court that carried Jesus on the back? Are you willing to go beyond your department and go beyond that department and call somebody else from another department and say hi to them and pray with them and greet them? Are we willing to go beyond that Praise the Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit who spoke to us today will encourage us more so we shall be a team that is going to win for Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for today in the name of Jesus that whatever situation, whatever circumstance, that as we study God's word today, we are winners. As we study God's word today, we are more than conquerors. Because we are learning how to be one and not to be divided. You have sent us in this nation, in Believer's Miracle Center, to stand and preach your gospel and to grow and to expand. Father, I pray that you open the windows of heaven for us. Father, that every ministry will come from heaven on your throne. Be blessed by you, empowered by you. That every department will be empowered by you. That we shall not look at those sections that for me I belong here and I belong here, I belong here. But we are one. We belong to one another. We are in the body of Christ. We are one body. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you that you have made us one. That if somebody is feeling the pain, I feel the same pain. Paul wrote to the church and said, I'm sending, I'm sending Tychus to tell you more about us about our situation, so you can pray for us, so you can feel the pain we are going through while we are in prison, for one reason, because we were imprisoned for preaching Jesus. Father, I pray that the body of Christ, Believers Miracle Center, shall go beyond any suffering we go through, go beyond any pain, and look at the body of Christ, because when we are one, we win. And we are winners. And we are the body that you have put in Washington, D.C., metropolitan area, in Maryland, in Virginia, to win, to win souls, to pray for the sick, to help the needy. We pray for those who are 
who have no shelter, oh God. We pray for those who have no food. We pray for those who have some who are suffering. Father, you are the provider. Father, you are the provider. May we be a team that will reach out to those who are in need and help them. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord, for the winning team that you are building in Believers Miracle Center. And everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I always encourage uh, to share. I know there are some people who are live uh, watching right now. Why don't you share with someone, even if they're coming late, they will listen to the message because we are team builders. Begin with sharing with, with someone to show that you're a team builder now in Jesus' name. May God bless you, love you, and see you tomorrow. God bless you. Amen. Have a good night.